We've been waiting for you. Come in. I'm curious. When Kiryu-san got here, were you the ones who booked the room? Yes, we arranged it. We were aware of Kiryu-san's condition, but once again underestimated the dangers he would face. Initially, Akane-san's procurement was our sole and simple objective. Yeah, but in that case, your mission would be accomplished by now. Akane-san's at Yamai's place as we speak. You could just grab her. Indeed. Why don't you have a seat? This may take some time to explain. To put it briefly, Daidoji's plans now extend beyond Akane-san herself. Polykana's actions have illuminated certain aspects of the mission which were otherwise obscured. That is, Akane-san's charge, the girl Lani, is Polykana's true target. So Daidoji faction, Yamai's gang, it's all the same story. Excuse me? Yamai was chasing Akane-san without any idea why, just like you. All over Hawaii, people were hunting Akane-san just because they knew someone else was too. Everyone, desperate for a little more pull underground or a one-up on their enemies. I understand. From your perspective, we may seem all too similar. Except we have always known why Akane-san was sought after by Palikana. It was no mere spurious chase. What's it all about then? This information is not to be uttered outside of this room. Palikana has negotiated a backroom deal with our government. <laughs> oh, have they now? And so, you can do better than that? Nuclear power is returning, and as for radioactive waste involved, Polykana has offered to dispose of it. What? We've been told Nele Island, their nerve center, possesses the facilities to see it buried. Polykana was able to coordinate this arrangement thanks to one man, Ebina, of the Seriu clan. Ebina? Seriously? Waste is the ultimate quandary for any nuclear society. Reactors can pose more harm than good because of it. Considering that, Ebina and Polykana represented a true godsend. The men at the top couldn't be happier, of course. They could restart the generators, construct new plants, even export them to smaller nations for massive profit. However, the Daidoji faction knows when something is too good to be true. We are certain there's some sort of pitfall lying in wait here. Uh, okay, a, pit a pitfall? Wh what do you mean? We're not sure. The only people who would know for certain are the ones who offered the deal. To understand Polycon's true intentions, superficial negotiations will not suffice. We have to dissect them. And the only way to manage that is with the proper bait. So they're just bait to you? Akane-san and Lani? Yes. The Daidoji faction has seen fit to share that with us under the circumstances. Hanawa's death was... Unusually blind sighting. So give it to us straight. You're Daidoji guys. You're like actual evil masterminds. We are a shadow power in Japan. That said, the shadows aren't what they once were. So why come to Hawaii and play proxy war with Palikana? It can't just be as simple as stopping a bad deal. You misunderstand us entirely. Our interests lie solely in the prosperity of Japan. We simply place our focus on long-term planning rather than short-term profit. Halaikana's waste disposal is unlikely as secure as they claim, nor worth what they'd siphon from our taxes. When the future comes, what sort of country will our children inherit? That's the question every patriot must answer honestly. Huh. Spoken like a true man in black. I've got a question. Assuming we get Lonnie back, would be your next move. Just as before, we would escort her out of Palikana's reach. We still have our aircraft prepared. Okay. In that case, let's say that right now, our goals are the same. Keeping Akane-san and Lani from Palikana's hands. 
Certainly. Only one impediment. The man who betrayed us for the enemy. Yeah. Ajon. You said before, you found out more about him? Eiji Mitamura. Surprisingly, that's actually his real name. Started out as a political reporter for the Toto Post. Eichon worked at a paper? Indeed. Until his abrupt termination five years ago. After he was found guilty for vehicular assault. Some kind of hit and run? Seemingly. However, Mitamura insisted he was framed by Yakuza in his testimony. He specifically named the Arakawa family, saying they were colluding with the police commissioner. What? Apparently, he'd been on their case for some time, picking up evidence of corruption. Mitamura was good enough at his job to be considered a threat. And so, he had to be silenced. So, after another long, exhausting day on the beat, our reporter was driving home when... Suddenly, a pedestrian steps in front of his car. A.G. says it was the Arakawa family setting him up. No real proof, of course. Then the car's EDR footage was examined in court. The victim was moving erratically. Even so, there's still nothing conclusive there. And when the victim denied any connection to Arakawa, it was the final nail. Fortunately, with only a minor injury sustained, it was ruled a fairly slight driver's error. He got off with a fine of a few hundred thousand yen. However, his public reputation was another matter. Supposing the Arakawas really were behind the accident. Regardless of the verdict, they got what they were after the moment it happened. He said Eiji had no proof. Why do I feel like you know there's more to it? Even if the Arakawa family planned the incident, Masumi Arakawa's involvement is doubtful at best. No single reporter, however much noise they're making, would draw the patriarch's attention. That said, Joe Sawashiro is another matter entirely. We would have to admit, this seems quite like his handiwork. Well, if it's really true, then A.G. and I have way more in common than I'd have thought. Mafia, Yakuza, whatever. We both had our lives fucked by these people. <clears throat> All right, so where does A.G. go from there? After being let go from the post, he decided to take up a new cause. A non-profit organization, Leech Japan. Hey, Sean? No way! He threw in with those bastards? The Arakawa family had cost him everything. Yakuza abolitionists like Leech Japan must have seemed quite noble. Hardly difficult to see why he turned to them. <clears throat> Mitamura flourished within their network. Ryo Aoki quickly took notice of him, gave him leadership over the entire Tokyo metropolis. Hmm. Wasn't Kume the head of the Yokohama branch? That's some trick of fate, huh, Kasuga? Yeah. One thing, though. So if Eichan hates Yakuza as much as he seems to, why would he work with Ebina? Does he actually buy into the whole second dissolution story? That's about the only reason that makes sense, given what we're hearing. The guy's so desperate for payback on the Yakuza. He'll help another Yakuza take them down. Hold on. You really think so? Eiji's a true believer in the dissolution. Okay, maybe. But the things he's done? Helping the Mafia kidnap a little girl? I can't imagine crossing those lines for revenge. Well, maybe you're less alike than you think. Eichi will just have to give us answers himself. Right on, so what's next? Ebino recruits A.G., who takes Chitose's channel over? Uh, once a reporter, always a reporter? Or a gossipy VTuber, in this case. And now, the channel's practically Ebina's mouthpiece. Mitamura is likewise Ebina's proxy in Hawaii. Polycon's support strengthens him considerably. Lani is the key here. Without her, we fail. Kiryu-san's legacy, Anawa's sacrifice, all will amount to nothing. Yeah, no shit, but we're still dead in the water over here. Oh, Shichon sent me a text! Whoa, what'd she say? It's just a picture. Looks like some kind of bar? She just took it. Think Shichon wants us to meet her there? 
Could that be where AG's hold up? Tell me, any chance you know this place? Please say you do. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, I got this. Shit, yeah! Kasuga-san, do you believe Lonnie's there as well? Better get there fast. Find out. Thanks, guys! Anawa-san, I hope your faith in them proves wise. Ichiban. Hold on. Right here, Ichiban. Club Guilty. Supposedly, it's one of the most exorbitant clubs in Hawaii. And seedy as hell. I wonder what's going down. Chichon's calling. Can you hear us? It's me. You okay, Chichon? I was searching for AG. It was the only way think to make amends to you all. You don't owe us amends. We can do this together. Just... Please, listen to me. AG is inside. In Club Guilty, all the way in the back. A VIP table. He's drinking, laughing. There's Polycana everywhere. <sighs> okay, gotcha. The Chichana, are you inside? Yeah. We're on our way. Let's do this as a team. Aichan's ours. We'll get Lonnie back, too. There's no time. And what are you saying? We're not on the same team. I betrayed you. Aichi manipulated you with my help. If you come after me, I might have to kill you, too. Will you remember what I said to you back in District 5? <sighs> Chichan, nothing's changed since then. I made the decision to trust you. That was my choice. No regrets. Believe me, everything's gonna be okay. Never doubt this man's heart, girl. Hang in there, Chi-chan. Tell her I said we're coming. For God's sake, Tony, I'm weaker. <laughs> okay. See you inside. Okay. doing here I think a friend of mine has a table inside you mind I'll just squeeze through 
The balls on this guy. Hey, fellas! Looks like we got ourselves a new punching bag. Hold on, Chichan. Almost there. Really pissing me off. The battle is on. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Here I come. Saddle up, partner. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Uh. I think I'm getting stronger. Who knew I had it in me? Look at me go! as ever. Hey, Kasuga-san! Come on over! show. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. I'll be right up. Ready? Let's dance! Guess I'll scoop this Come on! <laughs> let's go, let's go. Here I come. I'm even stronger now. Nice! 
Look at me go! <laughs> oh, that's fine work! Kasuga-san, look! Standing ovation. <laughs> He's not with you? Where did you take her? Oh, my bad. I am so sorry, but... Girl's already dead. Huh? What'd you say? This is shit! No more fucking around! Oh... If it's any consolation to you boys, we disposed of her ages ago. So, don't blame yourselves, okay? You'd have never made it here in time. Came all this way for nothing. Sucks, doesn't it? <clears throat> but, hey... You guys got to party at a trendy club, at least. <laughs> Night wasn't a total loss, right? Right? Oh, and, uh... <laughs> Kasuga-san, you have to pay for the property damages. Sorry. See, this place has standards, after all. <laughs> huh? Oh, took you long enough. Lani's still alive, isn't she? Chito say. Chichon? I listened in on you saying that Bryce is expecting her. You were so good at spying on people. Never thought it'd be your turn. Where is she? <laughs> Bottom of the sea, probably. You really think I won't shoot you? <clears throat> fine, fine. You win. Just calm down for a second. One question. How did you know I'd be here right now? I snuck a GPS transmitter into your bag. Planted it at the Daidoji safe house, actually. <laughs> Can't believe I missed that. Oh, Kasuga-san, you see this? This woman we're dealing with? Treachery! Just flows in her veins. The girl's a fucking genius at it. See, that's why I used her. Her channel made that clear from the start. I answered your question. Now talk. Tell me what I want to know. Where is Lani? <laughs> right away. Behind you! Oh, that's a pretty bad cut. Hold still. I'll stop the bleeding. What were you thinking, Chichon? Leave me and get Lonnie! Just save your breath, would you? Honestly. You'd shoot a man in cold blood? You know, your parents would be mortified by your behavior. Don't you regret being such a disappointment... to Tara? Fuck you! That's garbage! Her parents would be proud! Anyone would with a daughter like her! Lani owes you her life. Great job, Chichan. Ichiban. Now. Lonnie's coming with us. You're damn right. I can't bear to see her like that. We'll save her. Let me fight too. I know I have no right to ask, but I'm begging you. Let me fight. <laughs> For sure. Good with you? <laughs> like she'd even listen to me if it wasn't. Let's make this quick. One of our team needs first aid. Now. Yeah. That's right.
Persistent. Hey, John. She's just a little girl. <laughs> uh, I'm still a John to you. Uh, don't you understand at all? We were both lying to each other. Everything was an act. I was the poor kid in a chair, and you, you were a yakuza with a human soul. Okay, Kasuga-san can have her. He's fought so hard. <laughs> ah, take this too. They come in a set. <laughs> oh, 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 don't squirm like that. These things explode upon impact. <laughs> you better stay still. There we go. You can relax now. Lani-chan's all yours. Well, Bryce might be mad, but he was only going to kill her anyway. This is more efficient in the long run. Please don't do this! Hey, chan I already told you. That's not my name. <laughs> Souls. It doesn't detonate on impact. <laughs> this is what sets it off. Tear gas! Damn it! Lenny, up here! How tenacious! Wrong way, though. 
Chichan! Lori! Chichan! Damn it! Hey, Chan! A wee ho, Kasugasa. Lonnie, where would they take her? Probably Nelly Island, fast as they can. And delivered to Bryce. Nelly Island, huh? The mystery destination. Halekana's holy land. So, there's nothing more we can do? None of you owe me your forgiveness. But for what it's worth, I'm sorry. Everything. I did... Everything he asked. Eiji had me over a barrel. I knew that Akane-san and Lani would eventually pay the price for it. Can you tell us what you know, Chichan? Eichan and Ebina. Anything more about them. And the Tatara channel, too. Oh, yeah. And the channel really screwed us all, huh? <sighs> that VTuber character. I, I mean, the person inside of her. That was Chitose, huh? And you'd say whatever A.G. told you to. Right. But that only started about three years ago. I'd been streaming longer than that. I started out on my own for about four years. But it wasn't a, a call-out channel or, or whatever at first, hmm? Right. When I debuted, all I wanted was to talk about stupid, frivolous stuff. I came up with the name. Even drew the character myself. She didn't animate well back then. Just flipped between my crummy still drawings. That's quite a difference from now. And then, AG offered the channel funds to commission a big-time artist and increase viewership. She was still the Tatara that I designed, but she was different, too. Now, she was sexier. More chest shots and all that. <laughs> Tale as old as time. Being retold digitally. I can't imagine that felt too great on your end. Back in the beginning, getting ten viewers meant the world to me. It really was the time of my life. It was... the first time I felt something real. You see, since I was born, everything was dictated by my parents. My hobbies, my schoolwork, even my best friends, people I trusted for years. Turned out to be on my father's take. The housekeepers would spy on me. They'd tell my parents everything I did. How the hell could someone grow up like that? My only reprieve was crawling under the covers at night to hide the glare of my phone. Then I could stream as Hisoka Tatara, and I could finally feel like myself. How dumb is that? Fake name, fake appearance, fake voice. But that's when I felt like the real me. Mm. The Tatara channel was something I started because I needed to escape. And then three years ago, it changed. How'd it happen? Around that time, a Fujinomiya cargo tanker sank. Do you remember? Over 20 crew members on board. And all of them died. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that, I think. Containers were overloaded. I caught some of the press conferences apologizing for it. Well, totally missed that. The Fujinomiya Group's chairman, my father, wanted to cover it up. You're, you're kidding me. Completely by accident, I found the documents where my father ordered the information suppressed. Not only did they toss away human lives, they tried to act like it never even happened. I made copies and mailed those documents to every TV station and paper I knew. And then, nobody did a thing. 
So as ridiculous as it seemed, I brought it up on the Tatar channel. Seriously? What happened then? <laughs> on a channel with an all-time high of 10 viewers? Absolutely nothing. Well, no. There was some response. Fake. Who cares? Shitty vibes tonight. People peeled off one by one, till I was talking to an empty chat. Hard to imagine it going differently, I guess. Everyone swallowed the cover story about an out-of-season typhoon. That was when he found me. When Eiji Mitamura tracked me down. What do you mean? He came to you in person? <laughs> Eiji was a reporter at a paper before that. The Yakuza ruined him, though, somehow. Yeah. And then, he found my stream. Tatara, he figured, must be someone close to my family. He also deduced that it was most likely a student. After that, I was the only one who fit the profile. We talked, and Eiji gave me a present. It was a script to read on my stream, written in much more provocative language. A script? So he really was feeding you lines this whole time. We called out the Fujinomiya's pull among the wealthy elite and the media. Named every name. Then, that video got picked up everywhere. It really had a buzz. Once it was all over the net, mainstream outlets couldn't ignore it. People started cutting deals. Executives who knew they were culpable coughed up more evidence for leniency. Right, that explains it. Those press conferences I remembered seeing. Yeah. Public's outrage kept growing, and soon, my father couldn't avoid the line of fire. He told me to get out of the country until things cooled down. Been in Hawaii ever since. It was nice, at first. So, in a roundabout way, you ended up freeing yourself from your family. Now I get it. I bet your parents would have never let you dress like this. What, too much skin for you? Actually, it makes for a pretty good disguise. So they don't object. You wouldn't know it by their faces when we video call, though. Because of the tanker scandal, and Eiji guiding the narrative, the Fujinomiya group finally faced consequences. Honestly, I thought of Eiji like a savior back then. He was like some kind of modern-day hero, fighting for justice. Chichon, anyone would have felt that way. So if all of that happened three years ago, what came next? Eiji and I started operating the Tatara channel jointly. Our entire focus was calling out corrupt public figures. Eiji would unearth scoops and write our scripts. His stories were accurate, well-researched. And most importantly, they were sensational. Politicians, CEOs, celebrities. He exposed anyone in power with something foul hidden in their closet. More and more people started watching our videos, of course. Our subscriber count kept growing. Kept growing so fast it was ridiculous. Uh, it sounds like the Tatara channel we're familiar with now. Believe me. I thought I was doing the right thing. With news media bought and paid for, they never would have gone after the people in charge like we did. And then, little by little, Eiji's scripts started going off the rails. He wrote about an ex-Yakuza who claimed he had reformed, but was still double-dealing in secret. At the time, it seemed like another legitimate expose. But after that stream went out, more and more scripts came in about former criminals who were trying to make a new start. People who'd already paid their debt to society made a spectacle of. Well, he must have sensed his game plan at that point. Feed you and the viewers real scoops first to amass an audience, then start on his actual objective. Hisoka Tatara became a puppet, dancing on his shitty little strings. And I was being used to ruin the lives of people who didn't deserve it. I never wanted that. Tatara was never supposed to be like this. This vindictive little tattletale. <sighs> it was all too much to take. So I told Eiji that I was leaving. Except, he wouldn't let you quit. That was when he threatened to go public with my real identity. In the name Ebina, 
his Yakuza benefactor started getting thrown around. So I shut up and read the next script. The hero of Yokohama exploiting ex-Yakuza to do his bidding. Now I get it. After that, you all know the rest. Let me ask one thing. You defied Achan, even though he could ruin you. What made you do that? <sighs> Akane, son. Lani was all alone, and she protected her. She's an old woman, but still willing to risk her life to do good. Once I saw her, I just couldn't live with myself anymore. I see. But I know. I know that doesn't make up for the channel. For all the evil I've done. Eiji frightened me so much, I... I couldn't openly oppose him. Back at Akane-san's house, when I, um... did what I did to you. It was to buy you time. Hoping you'd find Akane-san on your own. Because Eiji had given me orders. Pose as the housekeeper, he said. And when Ichiban comes, get in with him. He was betting you'd find her before anyone else. And so, Chichan, you thought that by stealing my clothes and getting me arrested for indecency, you were actually helping me out in the long run. Yeah, I'm not a pro spy or anything. I was desperate. When AG asked what happened, I figure I'd make something up about unexpected trouble. Well, only... Then Kiryu-san showed up and got involved. So at District 5, he gave me one last chance to start following you. If I failed again, he would tell my family everything I'd done. What a scheme. In the end, I was too weak and scared to do anything but go along with it. And now Hanawa-san and Wong are dead. Akane-san and Lani are still in danger. I can't make any more excuses. No more lies. And you're not keeping anything else from us, right? Right. I swear to you. Can we believe that? A born traitor will stab you in the back again and again. You're right. I guess. There's nothing left to say. Hey, you all right with this, Kasuga? Tomi has a pretty valid point. Maybe traitors can't be trusted. Of course, Tomi also betrayed Yamai, so that's rich coming from him. I just knew someone would bring that up. I knew. <laughs> Chichan, when we first met, for whatever reason, you took everything I had on me. Except this. <gasps> you knew I wanted to give it to Akane-san, that it was important. We talked about it while we ate, remember? That's why you left it with me, isn't it? <laughs> maybe. Or maybe I just thought I wouldn't be able to pawn it. Could be. Either way, I appreciate it. Because it really is something important. And I never got to say this. Thank you, Chichan. <laughs> this fucking guy. This was supposed to be my apology. Why are you like this? Okay. Thank you too, Ichiban. Awesome. That takes care of all that. Lonnie's still Hawaii's hottest commodity, and Akane-san can't protect her anymore. As it is, there's nothing in the world that'll keep me from seeing this through. Everyone, I'll need your help though. Let's make things right for them. Count on me. <laughs> Come on. Do you even have to ask? Mm-hmm. I'm here to stay. Yeah. Welcome back, Chichan. So then, the Kasuga party is reunited once and for all. <laughs> Damn right! Now! Cheers! Cheers!
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is cool. Always so hard to choose. What am I feeling? Oh! 
Catch you later. learner.
What you looking at? Get out of my town! Rex, time to throw down! <laughs> let's go, let's go! Got you now! Don't get caught! Take Come your best shot! I think I'm getting stronger. Hey! I'm who knew I had it in me. I think I'm getting better at this. Alright! Good to see you. What is it now? I'll start right now. Well worth your time. Meet your expectations? That should be much better. I'll start right now. Uh, just to meet your expectations? Well worth your time. I'll start right now. That should be much better. Meet your expectations? Well worth your time. I'll start right now. That should be much better. Meet your expectations? Well worth your time. I'll start right now. That should be much better. Meet your expectations? Well worth your time. <laughs> 